Well, hello, everybody. We're glad to have you today. We're tuned in today to a mastermind all about listings. And, uh, you know, really, it's just going to be a casual conversation um, about what's going on in your world when it comes to listings and uh, how we might be able to help each other out, some things that you might be struggling with or uh, that you've had great success with over these last few weeks. Uh, we called it a mastermind. Well, the masters today uh, the masters of the minds are you. That's why we're here. It's not me giving you a lot of content. Instead, we're just going to have kind of a, a natural conversation and chat about what's going on in your world uh, and how we can help each other improve. We've got uh, just over 30 people tuned in today. We're going to have a lot of people watch this uh, after the fact as well. And so it'll be great content for them. We'll post it onto the BH Genius YouTube page uh, and bhgeniuskch.com is also where you can find it. But hey, glad you're here. I'm Patrick. I'm an agent out of our Liberty office. I've uh, been with the company almost eight years now. This is uh, what I do, help people buy and sell just like you. I'm an agent just like you. And uh, I feel very grateful to get to come in and teach some folks like you guys as well and facilitate uh, meetings like this. It's a lot of fun for me. So I'm here in uh, my place in Liberty. I live up in Liberty and have lived here my whole life. But We've got many of you from our different offices uh, on board today. We appreciate you tuning in. But here's how it's going to work. Uh, I've come up with it uh, right here on the spot, so hopefully it'll work. But uh, what we're going to do is if you have a topic to talk about, and I hope you do because you tuned in today, so that means you've got something to talk about, uh, do me the favor of going into participants like we've shown you and then raise your hand. And I, I cleared out all the hands so you can raise your hand fresh and new, and that'll let us know that you've got a topic or a question or a concern or something that you've had success with over the last few weeks during quarantine, uh, and that'll allow me to call on you. And then if uh, while you're talking about your question, somebody else has an answer for you other than me, I'd love for you to type it in the chat. And then that'll be a good way to facilitate and not become, you know, too bogged down with going through the process of unmuting everybody and going back and forth. So we'll see how it works. Again, I just came up with that. So hopefully it'll work out well. But uh, do me the favor of raise your hand. We'd love to chat with you and figure out what's going on in your world. You know, uh, it's been pretty busy still as far as listings go. It's certainly been a lot slower. But as I talk, this would be a good time to raise your hand in the participants tab so I don't have to talk all day, but uh, talk to us about what you want to hear about with listings. But I've had some listings these last few weeks, and let me tell you, the showings um, are a lot slower, and I'm sure we're going to chat a little bit about that today. I'd love to have a conversation about what you're doing with your listings that are different than what you were doing six weeks ago before all of this started. Uh, you know, what are you doing as far as showing restrictions and uh, agent remarks and what signage are you putting up on the property? Those are some great things to have a conversation about today. But uh, hi, Sheila, I'll unmute you and uh, you can chat with us. Oh, Sheila. Hello. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I have to read the instructions. Yeah, I have a, an upscale listing that's coming back on the market and I'm going to do a Matterport uh, virtual tour. I just wondered, has anyone else done that? because it's an upscale listing. I know there's a couple of different virtual tours that you can do, you know, not with just the still pictures, but I just wondered if that's been effective and um, it, it surely takes a pretty long time for them to do it. I'm using um, the, our new vendor, Virtual View 360. Yeah, what did they so, tell you about timeline? What did, what, tell me about why um, you... This, this one is gonna be three hours. So um, it's a two story. 3,400 square feet first and second. We've got an attic with some that's floored that, you know, could be possible, possibly expanded, but that would take quite a bit of money. Works all right for storage. And then a basement that's partly finished, a tandem garage and unfinished space. So they said three hours, but it's pretty cool if you've ever, not ever looked at their Matterport um, tours. Mm -hmm. Has it anybody cool. done that? I've seen that quite a bit, yeah. And um, okay. I Mary, hadn't, so. I've seen it quite a bit in the MLS, and if you go through and look at some of the new MLS listings, a lot of them will have it. And I, I think it's a clever idea. It's not a cheap thing to do, especially for a listing that large, you know. But that's probably a type of listing that you would want to do that on, wouldn't you think? Right. Um, and so it, you know, not only gives you a 360 tour, but it creates a floor plan 
of the right. house that people can kind of fly through. That's kind of cool. If you've done that, chat through the, uh, put it in the chat, or if you want to unmute yourself, that's fine too. And you can chat with us about it. If you've got another topic, raise your hand. Uh, but if you want to just unmute yourself and uh, just make a little noise and I'll know you're ready to talk. But uh, as far as the Matterport tours go, you know, of course you'll want to put that in the 360 tour in MLS when you input your listing. Right. It also might be a good idea to put it into agent remarks. A lot of the agents may not know to look at that 360 tour button because it's something that we just historically haven't used a whole whole lot. And so you might put it into agent remarks too. Uh, but I think that's a, a great idea. And you're using that new vendor. So we'll be interested to hear how that goes because you'll be uh, you know among the first few that have done that. So that'll be good feedback for us. I had another you, topic that somebody, uh, Mickey asked, what's the cost? Do you, do you mind sharing four, the cost? It's $400, but it is a, almost a million dollar house. So, you know, you, in order to, it, these people have a couple of little children. And so, you know, whatever we do is, is um, health is so important to them. So um, I've used Virtual View 360 for a couple of years now, so I already know about their product. One thing I will tell you that I didn't know is that they also then give you still pictures as well, because I thought, well, now what will I have to do my flyer? Um, but they said I would have those two for that same price. In the it goes by in square price. footage. Mm -hmm. sure. okay. It's $200 for the two, first 2,000 square feet and $50 for each additional 1,000 square feet. So. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. And uh, Mary said that there's some flaws and Mary, maybe you want to type in the chat or unmute yourself and tell us what those are. I will tell you something that all of you want to think about when you're hiring out video tours or 360 tours or anything is that not all the real estate websites have them visible. And I just want you to keep that in mind for all of your listings when you're paying that expense for something <laughs> is that they're not always available online to all of the different consumers. So if you go to some of our competitor sites, well, you can't see them on there. Now, our two sites, our home suite and our Zap site, they do show up on there when you include that as the 360 tour in MLS. Um, but sites like Zillow or, uh, you know, a lot of our competitors, they just don't have those as options. And maybe that'll change as they develop more sites during uh, coronavirus. But keep that in mind if you're going to spend that on all of your listings. I've seen some, you know, maybe not for you, Sheila, but, you know, for your high dollar listing. But if it's an average listing, I've seen some great video tours that people have made. And, uh, you know, technically, you're not supposed to put a video tour link in that 360 field in remarks in MLS. Uh, but you can certainly put it under agent remarks. Uh, and that's a great way to, to show it off as well. But Good. What other feedback does anybody have for Sheila? Feel free to unmute yourself before we move on to uh, somebody we else's. A, we had a big discussion about the Matterport um, tours yesterday or Tuesday during our meeting. And if you look at a lot of them on MHS, there's really some flaws to them. They'll take you to a dead alley and then you can't get around it. Or some, one of them, they were talking about how you went down a hall and then you just kind of dropped through a hole in the floor and were down in the basement. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure that, I mean, on your on an expensive listing, yes, I can see it, but I'm not sure yeah. on your average listing, you're not just as well off with the VHT tour because you're getting the pictures and the tour, it's less expensive. And frankly, they're easier to maneuver as an agent. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you all saw that, not to, I'm certainly not bragging on myself, but I don't know if you saw the video that David had sent out in, in an email last week. It was a listing of mine. And I tell you, I just made a video on my iPhone. It was a simple one take video walkthrough that I'm confident that all of you can do. You just hold your phone, keep it somewhat steady, but the iPhone and a lot of the more recent cell phones will, you know, stabilize the video a little bit for you. And that's a great alternative for a home that's maybe not a million dollars like Sheila, you know, so uh, that's an option too for everybody. And you can simply upload that into YouTube. We talked in, a, in a, a session like this last week about all of you have a free YouTube account connected to your Kansas City Homes email since it's in G Suite. They've given you a YouTube account that's connected to that and you can upload your videos to YouTube. You can upload them as unlisted so only people with the links will see them. And you can put that link right into agent remarks in MLS. And I tell you what, on that listing, before even David sent it out, I had about 140 views of that video just from people seeing that um, through the MLS. 
Rick asked, what other companies are people using for video tours or 360 tours? Let's talk about that since it's kind of related to Sheila's topic before we move on. Sure, you in, mentioned, in, yeah, go ahead, Julie. Julie Kane, um, Leewood office. We use a different company a lot in the Leewood office for the big listings. Um, and I've done it myself with the Matterport. The guy's name is Josh, uh, Josh Mace, M-A-I-S. He's with Kansas City Spaces. His phone number is 913-314-2673. I hope I can give that out. But sure. um, his Matterport camera, it's like um, you said, it takes about three hours because it's this $10,000 camera that, that literally sits in the middle of the room and goes, Ch -ch -ch -ch, you know, and it does this room and then it does this room and it does this room. But we found it, uh, there are several agents in our office that use it on our, all our big ones. And we found it to be very, very helpful because it's like you said, Patrick, it also generates the still shots for all your MLS and all your marketing, but it also generates uh, the floor plan, mm -hmm. which again, if you've got a big listing and you can have the floor plan, I, I think in our opinion, in many of our opinions, it ends up uh, money well spent on, on the big ones, not the little guys, but the big ones. Sure, yeah, good feedback. And I think, uh, it, Julie, if you wouldn't mind putting that contact info in the chat for everybody so they can see it. And before you do that, it'll jump down real quickly, but I just wanna mention that Karen and Sherry both mentioned next door and it comes with the pictures and a 3D tour. He said, you, uh, Karen, you said he upload, uploads it to Zillow for free. Uh, not being branded, so that's good as well. And if you, if somebody might put their website or contact info, there's also a company called Amora Productions. We've used them a lot in the Northland. I know that um, I'm sure a lot of you might know of that name, but Amora Productions is who I've used for my pictures for the last, you know, seven years basically. And they do uh, not only regular videos, you could hire them for that. Nobody's really doing that much these days, but the 360 tours, they do those Matterport tours. So, um, yeah, Julie, thank you for posting that, Josh's name, and it uh, looks like, uh, Sherry, you agreed that Josh does it well, but that's not next door, that's somebody else. Uh, so, Stephen with uh, next door, Karen just put that in there, so jot some of those notes down before they go too far in the chat, uh, and jot that down for yourself. I'll try to make the chat available after the fact, too, and maybe send out some notes for you guys. But um, anyway, good feedback there. Linda, you asked when you talked about the free YouTube account, um, an unlisted video. That means that people can't find it on their own when they're searching YouTube. If it's an unbranded, you know, just a, a pure video walkthrough tour, you may or may not want it to be uh, listed where people could search for the address. If you Google search the address, well, guess who owns YouTube? Google and so if you Google the address that YouTube video if it's listed will show up possibly when you do a Google search and you may or may not want people finding that and so if you have it unlisted that means only people that have the link to that video meaning you shared it with somebody you put it in MLS that way um, those are the only people that would be able to see that and that might be important later after your listing sells or if you've got kids in the household that the people really don't want anybody in the world looking at the listing with the address out there that's why you would do that. So Sheila, thank you. Does that help you answer a little bit of your it, question? It does, thanks. Good. If anybody right. thinks of anything else, let me know though. Okay. You bet. Yeah, well, this, that's what this mm -hmm. is for, an open conversation, so good. And Julie, I see your hand up. Chat with us about what's going on with you. Um, that was it, I already did. So I'll un put my hand on, I guess. Do I put my hand on? I'll do it for you, no problem. Okay. Thank I'm you. just going to, ready? I'm going to throw your hand down. Are you ready? Here we go. There you go. Made a sound effect for you. All right. Well, uh, it looks like, hi, Paula. I, uh, Paula, is it the cat or is it you talking? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure she laughed me. at that. There you go. Thank you. I yeah, did laugh right. and I had to find the unmute button <laughs> and laugh at the same time. So um, I wanted to go back. You mentioned that you were doing videos on your own, uh, you know, with your phone. Mm -hmm. So the other day, um, I took my selfie stick. I have an old selfie stick that I never really used. And I hooked it, put my iPhone on it, and then flipped my camera. And then I walked around my own home. And using my selfie stick with my camera flipped, it kept the um, uh, camera still. And then I did a little video and talked of my own house, just practicing. So I guess that's my point. Um, if you think you want to try to make some of your videos 
for your listings, uh, that would be a good practice just doing it at your own home and the selfie stick helps. Isn't that a good idea, everybody? I think that's great to try mm -hmm. it on your own. Uh, walk around your own house. Take it a step further, Paula, and upload it to YouTube as an unlisted video to give you the experience of how to upload it, how to write the title and description, uh, and share that link with somebody and make sure it works. That's a great that's idea. A do I go, how do I do that? Do I just go to YouTube, or do I have to go into Google, uh, my Google account? Or Okay, everybody listen. This is what you're going to do. Everybody, you ready? tuned in yes. you're going to yes. go to youtube either on your phone if you've got the youtube app great now, if you've got it on a computer go to youtube.com okay that's pretty simple and then when it has you log into youtube just use your kansas city homes email and password because guess what that's a g g suite username and password right there so you're just going to use your already login now you may already have a, a youtube account that's fine you can upload it there just the same but it might be nice to have them all in one place. And when you download the YouTube app, there's a little uh, feature in the top right corner where it would have your name. You can tap on that and it would allow you to switch between your different YouTube accounts. It's gonna be easier to do it on your phone on the app because that's where your video already is. So you'd be able to just easily, uh, you know, put that in there and, and go from there. Does that make sense? That's awesome. Very simple. Yes, uh, I would just use our uh, Kansas City Homes and then our Google, our Gmail password that yeah, gets us in Google Drive and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, your same password that you use for your Kansas City Homes email or Google Drive or, you know, Docs or whatever you're using in the G Suite. It's the same. YouTube is owned by Google. And so actually, if you're in your Kansas City Homes email on your computer, if you click that little waffle, you know, the little squares up at the top right of the screen, uh, it'll bring you to all the different G Suite apps, and one of them is YouTube. So that's another way to get there. Um, but we all know to, to go to YouTube. And then Pam, you asked, then what? Good question. That's next. So if you, uh, once, you've create, once you've signed in, that's the hard part. The next step is there's a little camera icon if you're on an app. And you, it looks like, uh, you know, just a little old school TV camera or something. And so you tap, you tap onto that, and that would allow you to upload a video from your camera roll on your phone. And it'll take a few minutes depending on your internet connection. And so you want to leave the app open while you're uploading your video. You don't want to close out of it and go away. It'll stop the uploading. And uh, so that's a great way to, to go in and, and upload your video. You'll name it. You'll put a title in. You might just put the address in. You can put a description. Now, if you're sharing this as an unbranded video, then you really shouldn't put a whole lot of information in the description of your video. It needs to be unbranded. And same thing on the overlay of your video. You shouldn't have words. You shouldn't have text or logos or anything like that if you're going to be using it as an unbranded video to co-op agents or in the MLS. Uh, it should really be just a, a pure video. If you go look at my listing, uh, it's pending. But if you look at 224 Moss Avenue in Liberty, that's the video that was sent out last week. And if you go and look that up in MLS, you can see how it was in the agent remarks. You click onto that YouTube link, watch the video for some inspiration. Again, it was like the simplest thing I've ever done, but it's, it looks awesome. And a lot of that is just because your phone these days can do wide angle and it can stabilize the video. And I knew I paid $800 for that phone for a reason. So there you go, now you know why. So uh, let's talk about some other things. Uh, and yes, Mary, we'll be, we're recording this, so we'll be able to send it. Yeah, Linda asked, how long was your video? It was too long. That's what I would tell you. My video was like 9, 10, 11, 12 minutes. I don't remember. I've done a few of them at this point, and they're long. And so for the purposes of marketing, I'm not really using that walkthrough video as marketing. It's more so to give to co-op agents so they don't waste my seller's time, uh, and also for the buyers to do a serious walkthrough before they come and look at the house. And so it's, that's, it's, it's long. Not everybody's going to sit through and watch that. Uh, but if they're interested about the house, I believe they would watch all the way through. Now, if you get a little advanced and you have a lot of time on your hands, like I have, uh, like we all have these days, you could download a great uh, video editing app. There's a lot of them out there. One of, them, one of my favorite is Luma Fusion. And this is not meant to be like a video editing session, by the way. I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time on it. But LumaFusion is an app on your iPad or your tablet or whatever. And you can edit videos, very intuitive, easy to use. And so you could take that nine-minute video and clip it down into like, you know, one minute. 
and use that as marketing. You could put some graphics or text over it. Some uh, LumaFusion has some music that you can overlay on top of it. Lots of great features. So uh, that's that sounds like a whole diff different session. We just came up with a new class, didn't we? But uh, we'll come up with some ideas on that. Rick asked me what phone. You know, I've got the iPhone 11. I don't think it's the Pro version. It's just the, I think it's the XR, whatever it is. You know, it does the wide angle. It does some video stabilization. A lot of you have the more recent iPhones. And if you've got that, well, guess what? You've got a great uh, video camera in your phone. All right, well, let's talk about some other topics. Somebody else give me something. Yeah, raise your hand if you've got something else to talk about. But Linda, I think you're right. You know, I think the video, the buyers really appreciate having a video walkthrough. And I tell you who appreciates it more, your seller. And even if it's not going to be watched by 20 people, your sellers know that you're going above and beyond to prevent unnecessary showings on their property during this time. And it, it really helps to build confidence with your sellers. Uh, and it, it, the videos look great for one thing. And all they are is iPhone videos. So that's pretty good. Go watch that one that I put in the chat. And Valerie, you're right. Yeah, you've got it. There is a class in there. I forgot about that. But there's a great video on the YouTube um, uh, on the YouTube page. Speaking of YouTube, you can search BH Genius. Uh, it's the BH Genius YouTube page, and it's not BHG Genius. It's BH Genius, uh, and they've got all the training videos on that YouTube page. And they use the app InShot. That's a pretty great, uh, intuitive, easy to use app too. And there's a lot of them out there that you could choose from. You're not tied to any to using any particular ones. Yeah, what else do you want to talk about? I'd love, uh, oh, hi, Linda. Yeah, go ahead, right on time. Um, I just, I just want to know, are people really wanting to list? Most of my clients are wanting to wait. And so, um, you know, I, I know I, I still have this sort of mixed emotions about all the things we've heard work work on essential stuff only if they need to move etc cetera, etc cetera. and yet we're you know talking about listings and mm -hmm. so i'm just trying to ask you know um are are you guys experiencing people who want to list just because they want to move or it's is it mostly really what i would think of as essential moves well, I'm seeing a lot of head nods when they're talking about just wanting to move. And I'll give you my insight, and maybe some of you can type in the chat. And if you, once I'm done, just unmute yourself and talk to us. But um, Linda, I think people are moving if they have to move. And my emphasis for this class is to play by the rules and to understand that right now we're working with people that have a necessary move. Now, if somebody calls me and they want to move, and I know that they might call another agent that wants to, to help them sell. I, I want to help them. I want to be the agent that they choose to work with. And so if somebody calls you and wants to sell and you've talked to them about the risks involved, then move forward and list the house if you're comfortable doing that. Now, a lot of our agents have said, no, I'm just not going to be listing houses right now. That's okay, too. But at the end of the day, you've got to make your business decision about what listings you're going to be able to take. And you know, our duty to our clients at this point is to tell them, hey, it's a risky time to sell. We've got people that are coming through your house that we don't know who they are. Sure, we might do some you know, checking on them before, uh, but their pre-approval doesn't tell you whether they're coughing or not. So you know, I mean, you've, you've got risks involved, but as long as you've prepared them for that, I think that you've got to do what's right for your business. But uh, you know, Mickey, I saw you uh, nodding and tell us what your thoughts are on that. Um, I actually, so I just listed a house. This is a little different because it is vacant and it was a flip or a remodel. Um, we had planned on listing, you know, this week and a couple days before listing, he asked me if we should wait, um, until everything is over. And I just told him it's totally up to you, but you know, inventory is still down. Prices are still pretty high. So if you want to wait, we can wait. If you want to list, I would say let's list and see what happens. And I brought it on the market on Wednesday, had six showings, and it sold immediately. Um, and then I, I have had a couple other clients also call me in the last week about wanting to sell. Um, you know, they don't, one of them is going to be a relocation, so they'll sell 
come on the market probably next month. Um, and, you know, we did have a discussion about everything going on and, you know, showings are down a little bit. We'll be really careful with who comes into the house and being protective. Um, and then another client, the other client that called me, they want to take advantage of the higher prices because I think someone else put a comment in the chats that, you know, they don't know what's going to happen with the market in a few months. And so they want to take advantage of the higher prices now and, you know, get those, get the higher proceeds. Yeah. I think that's good, Mickey. What was your price of your listing that came on Wednesday? 370. It was yeah. in Waldo. So, you know, a, a relatively high priced home that yeah, still found that a buyer. Area especially. Yeah. That found a buyer pretty quickly. And mm -hmm. uh, that's good feedback. I will say that you brought up a good point that, you didn't make the decision for your clients. And I think that's important right. for all of us to hear very clearly today that you don't want to say, yeah, let's do it. You know, yeah. I don't make the decision for them. Give them the facts. Hey, isn't that the way we always do our business? But sometimes we catch ourselves telling people what to do. And I think it's important now more than ever to protect ourselves that we're giving them the information that they need to know to make an informed decision. Uh, that's what I would recommend to you. So that was good. And yeah, I mean, yeah, you mentioned somebody in chat. Uh, yeah, Karen, I mean, you mentioned to people are telling you they want to list now before the economy tanks. Now, do yeah. I personally think that's going to happen? Uh, no, and hopefully I'm right. But uh, at the end of the day, we don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. But there's a lot of scary news stories that people are watching right now that make them think that. Now, I don't know if our duty is to play along with that and to do what they want us to do. It, our duty could also be giving them the facts that they need to know that, um, you know, that the risk of that may be very low. I don't know. So we need to give them the facts that we have to help them make an informed decision. And our job has always been supporting our clients' decision. It's never been to make decisions for them. And so that's important over these next many weeks. But uh, Linda, does that kind of help you a little bit? Yes. Uh, Karen, um, I think you, let me, let me find it up in the chat. Yeah, Karen, you mentioned that you've got a whole protocol. Do you mind sharing a little bit about what your new listing protocol is? Sure. Um, so I, you know, I'm a germaphobe in the best of circumstances. So I have this entire list of things that uh, for both showing uh, when I'm showing buyers and then for listings that I have. So I have... Um, I supply booties and hand sanitizer and um, Clorox or Lysol wipes, uh, gloves, masks, and then I also have a trash bag. So um, for showings, uh, I go into the house, turn everything on, come, wipe everything down, come back out, make my buyers dress up in this garb and then they go in and do their thing. When I'm in there, I'm also checking it out as if I were with them to point out, you know, anything. So that's what I do on the buyer side. On the flip side for my listings, I have all of that stuff in the home. Uh, the people have to view the um, 3D tour first and acknowledge that they, the agent acknowledged that their buyers did look at that to make sure they really do want to see the home. And then I also make them sign the uh, waiver. And then I have all of that stuff supplied, the exact same stuff supplied in the home. I go over originally at the beginning of the day, turn on all the lights, crack open all the doorways, open kitchen cabinets, open closets, anything that I can think that they could potentially want to open. And then I ask the agent not to touch anything uh, in reverse. And then I go over at the end of the day, wipe everything down, close everything up and then start over the next day. So, and all of this is in writing that I, I send to them. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of, and then pre-listing, I, I send everything via, um, mail first. So my listing presentation comps, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So okay. everything is done with minimal contact. That's Pretty good. I mean, so you know about it. Yeah, well, you know, you've completely tailored your business for this and you're seeing success from it. So that's good for everybody to hear. And I would encourage all of us just from, this is my personal perspective, I would always be very careful about what you're agreeing to do for your clients. If that's going to, you know, come and, and do a wipe down after every showing, um, just make sure you follow through on that, everybody, you know, and if you're not comfortable doing that or you're not uh, comfortable making yourself have the responsibility of doing that and, uh 
holding yourself accountable for that, then I, you know, certainly wouldn't give your clients that promise. And, you know, you mentioned some of your, your procedures for showings. You hope that other buyers agents are using your instructions and following them. Of course, there's never a way to know that guaranteed, uh, but we've got that great page that's in Canva, the, uh, the little sign that you can put up on the door or uh, you know, right when somebody walks in, I would put one on the door and I would put one where somebody walks in because by the time somebody opens the door, the client may not have seen it. You know, The door may already be open for them. So you might put a couple of them around, but it's great. On Canva, if you go to bhgeniuskch.com, uh, you can find COVID-19 resources. And from there, one of the options is that Canva template for that sign. And make sure that anything you download that it mentions uh, you know, hand sanitizer, or shoe covers, or wet wipes, or anything like that, that you're actually providing them. You don't want to make a false promise because, sure, it's not going to be good for your buyer, but more than anything, you don't want to disappoint your seller that you're not following through on what your own sign says. So make sure that you edit that. Um, Karen, you sound like you have some hand sanitizer, but um, I wish the stores did. You know, can I buy some from you? But uh, anyway, you know, I think it's just make sure you follow through on whatever your signage and wording says. And Paula asked, you know, Karen, is, is there any concern of making herself liable? I think I touched on that a little bit. I'm not going to put you on the spot, Karen, and talk about if you're ready to go to court or not. But I think, you know, you know what you're doing right for your business. You're comfortable with that. And that's, that's what we do as business owners. We make those decisions about what we're comfortable with. And so, the, you know, some of you may not be uh, comfortable with that, but Karen might be. Oh, and she mentioned in there too. She responded already. So thank you for that, Karen. And you found your green shoe covers. You always find the good stuff, Karen. Those boxes with your face on them and everything else. You always find the good stuff. But uh, Paula, maybe, I mean, Karen, I'm sorry, Karen, maybe put in there where you found some of that, of those shoe covers. Because let me tell you, all the Lowe's and Home Depots I've been to have been out of them. So I'd love to know where you found some shoe covers that are not gouged up in price, but uh, very good. Yeah, and Rick asked that same question. So, um, oh, there's a barbecue store that sells it. Okay. And you made some of your own. Uh, of course, Amazon, they might <laughs> extra large for big feet. Yeah. Mary asked about masks. You know, I'm sure some of you might be wearing masks. I don't know if you've found any of those or not. Uh, Paige, you mentioned uh, the Menards. I imagine the one off of Green Hills is the one that had uh, shoe covers this week. So up in the Northland. Uh, Joanna mentioned that Lucas Liquors has hand sanitizer. So there's some great options in the chat of, of where you can find some of those, uh, you know, supplies. But uh, somebody asked about masks. I think that's something as a personal decision of what you've got to wear. I've said all along, you've heard me say it in my classes, you know, I, I believe the people that need masks more than real estate agents are the people that can't find them in the healthcare industry. And so, uh, you know, I'm not going out and buying hundreds of masks. Instead, I, I'm changing the way that I do business. But if you want a mask, then you need to make one or find one. That's up to you and your business of what you need to do. But um, anyway, as far as, uh, you know, I'd love to chat with you about some other topics. I think Mickey, you put your hand up earlier. Is that just from what we were talking about? Anything else? Yeah, nothing else. Okay, good. So, uh, I mean, not good. You're welcome to raise your hand again and chat with us about anything. But uh, anyway, if anybody else has anything, I thought I might start a conversation now about what we think will come out of this as far as the way listings go uh, and how will we improve as being uh, agents and the things that we do. Let's have a conversation about that. I was watching this video yesterday and I don't remember who it was. He was uh, really annoying to me anyway, so I won't, you know, it doesn't matter who he was, but uh, he talked, he had a great line that I just loved. I'm going to completely rip it off, but uh, you know, out of all of this, not only are we still having to negotiate, we're still having to coordinate and collaborate and facilitate and uh, mitigate, but now we're having to videotape. And so, you know, there's all these great uh, things that we're doing. And I think at the end of this, a lot of consumers are going to see that our value uh, is even more uh, valuable to them. It, it's even more important to hire an agent out of all of this. And uh, so I don't know if anybody wants to have a conversation, but hi, Carol, I see your hand up. There you go. All I wanted to say was, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for. Um, if this had happened even a few years ago, we would not have had dot loop. We would not have had so many of the things we have in place now. So, um, you know, there are things to be thankful for. 
Isn't that the truth? Yeah. So many of us in our classes, you know, get so bogged down with the negative stuff and how to change and are we going to survive this? I don't have a closing coming up. You know, you can get really bogged down by the negative, but uh, I think you're right, Carol. You've got to take a minute to appreciate that we've been set up for this. We've had the technology and sure we may not know how to use it all completely, uh, but what great classes Christian is hosting uh, and sessions like this that you're able to come to and chat with each other and just get better. That's what we're here for. I think it's going to make us uh, better agents at the end of the day, even though right now it's really uncomfortable and, you know, we've got to survive this over the next hopefully three months. That's what I'm saying. Three months. I'm just believing for that because, gosh, I hope it doesn't take longer than that. Um, but, yeah. You know, Pam asked in the chat, do you think we'll ever be able to go back to open houses? Let's chat about that. Anybody? Patrick, I was, um, I did not, of course, do an open house, but I did uh, go to attend one of my agent's virtual open houses on Saturday. She held it from one and then she held it again at 1.30. And um, she just walked everybody through the property and it was funny because I got in on the middle of the first one and I uh, responded back to her and said, maybe throughout your virtual tour, you need to repeat the um, price and the location and everything because she did that whenever she first got on. But if you're getting on in the middle of a virtual open house, you're not hearing that. So especially if you're doing a Facebook Live or something. So I encourage as you're doing those, and like I said, she just put it on her Facebook that she was gonna do a virtual open house, join her at this time on live and everything. And um, the only thing, like I said, is I would encourage you to repeat the price and the uh, location of it throughout the video. Maybe you say, and this is the third bedroom, three bedrooms for such and such price throughout the open house. Uh, tour. That's a great idea. Yeah, you often don't think about that. And you could all if you're doing Facebook Live, for instance, you can put that in in the, uh, you know, the header text that's up there at the top of your video. That'd be a good way to, um, to to have that in there for everybody to see as well. But yeah, always repeat yourself. And you know, I think as we record ourselves, now that we're new videographers and professional broadcasters, all of a sudden, we can go back and watch ourselves and learn what we do better. It's really painful to listen to ourselves, but I tell people this, you know, you sound like what you sound like, you know, that's what you sound like to other people. And that's what you look like to the world. Now, we all look a lot better in real life, I agree. But uh, in video, that's what we look like. So go back and watch yourself, no matter how painful it is. Uh, and you're going to get a lot of great feedback from yourself about how to become better uh, doing your videos and all of that. And I know it's hard, but it's important. It's important to get better. And you realize, oh my gosh, I should have said that differently. Um, and don't beat yourself up over it. We're all making mistakes. And most of the time, people don't even notice the things that you've noticed about yourself. So um, anyway, good feedback about videos there. And, you know, somebody, uh, Mary, you mentioned in the chat that you think open houses will always be essential. And hopefully we can do them again in person soon. I hope so. And Joanna, you talked about as everything opens back up, you know, open houses will start back up again. We've learned a lot about sanitizing. I think those things will always be in our, you know, realm of what we're, what we're working with these days. And in the future, we're always going to have sanitized, you know, sanitizing things. And who knows if we'll ever shake hands again. I don't know. It might be something else. Uh, so Ellen, we're thankful for you and all of our agents too. You know, I do this, I, I'm, I'm volunteering to do this. This is just what I'm, I'm doing with my time. I'm here facilitating classes with all of you. Uh, and I do it for fun. I enjoy doing it and helping everybody out and chatting. So uh, more than anything, we're grateful for Christian and our great leadership team. All of our brokers are working harder than ever from home. Uh, you know that as you talk to your individual brokers, but uh, all of our staff and support staff, not only are they working harder, um, but they're working harder with less resources. And so we appreciate them more than anything um, because they're the ones that are going to get us through this. And uh, Stacey, you mentioned how it's interesting to think about how technology can, you know, impact the number of open houses. Yeah, that's true. I, it, it'll be interesting to see how open houses come back to life. There's always going to be open houses, but it'll be interesting to see how prevalent they are in our future real estate industry um, as technology changes. But this is changing the way we're doing business, no doubt about it. Uh, hi, Linda, I see your hand up. Did, is that from now or earlier? Oh, we got to unmute you. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, go ahead, Linda. You just have to unmute yourself. There you go. I think, I think that we are going to have this type of business for possibly a year. I think, and I'm not trying to be pessimistic in any way, but I think that we're going to have um, a modified way of doing things and that we have to embrace this technology and, and use it to our best uh, way of handling things. And I, I think though, that until we have a real vaccine, that we are going to have some people out there that are going to be concerned and afraid and that we have to almost make some of the things we're doing now as standard way even for the next year. I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm just trying to be realistic about it. So yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I wish we had a crystal ball that told us when this was all going to vanish and when we were going to be able to go back to normal. But um, I think for a lot of people, it's easy to take it a day at a time and not get too wrapped up in the idea that we're going to be in quarantine for longer than a little while longer. Yeah, so, I don't mean the quarantine part. Sure. I guess I mean, um, doing more virtual meetings, more virtual open houses, tours, um, you know, trying to get buyers to be more qualified through the video tours, those kinds of things. I think that's going to be um, a, a, a change for I more agree with you, yeah. long term. And uh, I think that's though I think those things are going to become changes that we just enjoy doing in our business rather than doing them out of necessity. I think a lot of the things that we're learning to do right now are going to become long-term business practices for us that actually serve our clients better. So not necessarily are we going to be forced to do all of those things. And, you know, let's hope that it doesn't uh, take a year for us to get back to normal. But I think that it's, uh, you know, we've got a long road ahead of us. There's no doubt about that. I mean, people are going to be leery to get back to normal, even when you're allowed to. And yeah. uh, that's just the reality of working with people. And that's what we do for a living. So we've got to adapt to what those people are doing and, and how they're wanting us to work. But, uh, I have hey, a question also oh, sure. for um, Mickey. When you talked about your flip house that you sold, you know, in a day or so, um, mm -hmm. did you end up using the video tour uh, element at all, or or it was just straight open for anybody who wanted to see it? I did have my photographer do still photos, obviously, and also he did a video tour. So he just did. He didn't do the Matterport or anything, but he just did a video walkthrough, and I think it was very helpful. Okay. So some people still did look at that before they decided to come over. I think so. I don't know if they all did, but I think it definitely helped. Okay. Yeah. And I think, it's, I think if you are very clear in your wording and agent instructions and also in the showing instructions that you, put, you can put into showing time, uh, I think the more times you re reiterate the same points, people will follow those instructions. But uh, Mickey, you had your hand up. Just give us a quick point. I want to be able to get to page two before we, we log out. Okay. Um, I was just ask, wanting to know, you know, with us doing things virtually as much as possible and talking to sellers that may be coming on the market, whether it's a month from now or even three or four months from now, um, I'm trying to help them get their homes prepared um, without me actually stepping into the house. So I'm having them all send me pictures and do video walkthrough and send those to me. But I remember Christian mentioning in one of her last training sessions that they put together um, shots or digital marketing pieces for how to stage your home or how to prepare your home to sell. I think it was 10 steps. Um, I cannot find it anywhere. I'm looking on the Google Share Drive. I uh, Mickey, have you looked in Canva yet? Or on the BH Genius site? How do we, okay, so is there a Canva link from the BH Genius site? Yeah, yeah. so if you go to bhgeniuskch.com mm -hmm. and you go to COVID-19 resources, there's a big button at the top of the page. You just okay. click on that, one of that should be on that page, yeah. but. Um, I'll reference it's, it and, and I'll, uh, I'll put a link for you guys in, in my recap email that I'll send out as long as you've got your real names in here. Uh, perfect. If you've got your real name on Zoom, I'll know how to send you an email. So um, that way I'll send you that link. And uh, thank you. it looks like Paula found them in the G in the um, Google Drive under the shared, you know, the marketing folder. 
and okay. maybe Valerie, if you're still on here, maybe you can post in chat if there's another way. But uh, I think the easiest way to find them is on BH Genius KCH. All you've got to do at that point is click the link and it'll bring it right to your Canva account. Hey, Patrick. Um, yeah, go ahead. We added a link on BH Genius as well. So you can get to it from the resources drop down, um, marketing resources. And then we're dropping everything that's related to COVID 19 into a COVID 19 folder. So if you don't have any desire to edit and you just want to post, grab it from there. It's also the same thing as the marketing drive or the agent resources on marketing. Google Drive. Right. Sorry, can't talk. <laughs> so two places to find it, bhgeniuskch.com. There's a couple places on that site you can find it. And then also the shared Google Drive. Uh, and if you haven't ever been there, uh, that's way too deep for today. But you can find it on the little waffle, just like you found YouTube earlier. All right, good. Hi, Paige. Mute. There you go. Uh, I was just going to go back to, um, I, I'm sorry, I think it was Linda had asked the question about the videos and whether they were being, I had the same experience that Nikki had had where I listed something and I did have a lot of interest and got it under and it was amazing to me how many age and I was having trouble uploading the video and I had so many agents reaching out for the video. So I really think it's up to us. Like we shouldn't be waiting for our buyers to let you know, they were, they were being proactive. Like, I want to see that video. We're deciding whether we're going to run and gun and see this house. It was in Platt city and things seem to go fast here in that under 300, you know, price point. So um, the video was powerful in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would bet at in a year, we're still doing videos. After all this goes away, I would bet that we're still doing video walkthrough tours and 360 tours um, because the consumers that are looking right now are gonna make that a standard for us in the future. And it's so easy to do. Somebody asked me, I, I forgot about the question then I moved on, but somebody asked me if I edited that 224 Moss Avenue video, go back and watch it. There's no editing. It's just posted literally the way that I shot it. Zero editing. So if you can take a 10 minute video on your phone and you can upload it for 10 minutes into YouTube by just setting your phone on a table and letting it do its thing, then you've uploaded a video walkthrough tour. So it's very intuitive and easy. Uh, and feel free to email me if you have any questions about anything with that. Well, we've got just a few more minutes. If anybody has any uh, closing topics, I'd love to uh, chat with you just real briefly. Anybody else? These little hour sessions are always good. They're real quick. You know, we can get a few good topics in and then we're on our way out uh, to live the rest of our day. But hey, listen, I'll come back uh, with some more of these sessions like this. Christian and I are talking all the time about what we can do better and how uh, she can come up with some new courses. And that's what we've done this week. You've seen so many new things. I hope you tuned into Leadership Live yesterday, by the way. I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, it was a great session that you can find on the YouTube page. We interviewed our bro Liberty broker, Joanna. Next weekend, uh, next week, Thursday, I'm interviewing Daryl Stiles. So I don't know if you like him or not. <laughs> uh, everybody does. So you might as well tune in and watch that video because that'll be fun too next Thursday at 930. But I hope this session has been useful. Uh, we'll post the recording. We'll be able to chat more. And I'll send you guys a recap email, those of you that tuned in. Hey, if you might be watching this session after the fact, send me an email. Uh, it's pmcdowell at kansascityhomes.com. Feel free to email me and we can always chat about what's going on. But thanks for tuning in. We'll have more sessions just like in, this, in the future. But I hope you go make some money this uh, week and weekend. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.